question that needs to be answered is, is there a God? See, that's not the right question. Because the critical issue today is identity. God's existence is not obscured from us today. No one can come to Christ without having some knowledge of who God is. Now, to culture today tells us God is dead. He's inconsequential. They attack our biblical perspective of God, and they attack our theology. And I think part of the reason for that is, is the fact that there is a famine when it comes to understanding who God is. And any time you have a famine, you have a tendency to be led away and led astray in different ways you would not normally if you understood and got a grasp of who God really is. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. I want you to think of your two favorite ice cream flavors on top of an ice cream cone. Got it? All right. Open your eyes. What are your favorite flavors? Shout them out. Okay. We, we, when you said strawberry, I mean, you, you saw strawberry, right? You saw it was pink, it was red. You, I mean, you can visualize your favorite ice cream color, flavors. Now I want to do something else. Close your eyes again. I want you to visualize God. Okay, open your eyes. What would you see? What would you see? Jesus. Truth. Jesus. What else? Heaven. Mercy. Mercy. Okay. <laughs> you guys saw... You guys saw perceptions of, of God. You, never, you didn't see... Is God mercy? Yes. But is, if you look up and you see God, do you see the word mercy? No. That's part of his, one of his attributes. Heaven is where he's at. Jesus is how we saw him, how he, how he showed who he was when he was here on earth. See, it's difficult to grasp a concrete image of someone who's not someone who's not human. God is spirit. Nobody has seen God. Even Moses didn't see God. It's hard. So we've we got to make sure we understand if we're going to say that I believe in God, we have to understand. Now, God has revealed himself in history. In the acts of history, he has revealed himself to us. Now, the world will tell you, oh, no. God hasn't revealed himself. Where is God in history? Well, we have this thing here called the Bible. And, archae- and, and there's an argument about this. But I believe that archaeology has never once disproven the Bible. God reveals himself in the acts of history. He revealed himself to Moses. And what did he say? What did, when Moses says, well, what am I supposed to tell him who, who sent me? What did he tell him? What did God say? I am sent you. I am sent you. See, in Scripture, the name of God is extremely significant. When we speak about God, the third commandment prohibits us, prohibits us from taking the Lord's name in vain. Because when we do that, when we use it in a flippant way, or when we use it as part of profanity, we are disrespecting God. That's, what that is. That's why it says, do not take the Lord, name of your Lord thy God in vain. The first petition in the Lord's Prayer, what does it say? What are we supposed to do with God's name? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, lifted up, respected. See, to use the name of God flippantly, again, does it hollow it? You know, the Jews are so respectful of his name, his name, that they don't actually even say it or spell it out. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Here's how they spell it. How, next one. <laughs> That's how they spell it. If they spell it, they have to, they have to take the vowels out. They have such a respect for God and His name. God's name is holy. And why is that? Because one of the first things you can know about God is God is holy. 